I want to bring in Hugh Hewitt, host of radio's Hugh Hewitt Show. Today is Hugh's birthday. He's 25 years old, so naturally you chose to spend it here with our viewers, right? Yeah, I woke up this morning in Mike Allen's playbook saying happy 60th birthday. And I, so I've gotten more birthday wishes today than I ever have in the previous 59 years, I think. So uh, thank you, Don. Yeah, I always say I'm celebrating the anniversary. So if it's your 60th, the 30th anniversary of your 30th birthday. Okay, so happy birthday. You know what? I, what Donald Trump has proven, as is Hillary Clinton, that we get to work as long as we want. They're yeah. both 68, 69. They're, they're bundles of energy. If they can run for president, we can keep commentating. Absolutely. So you know, what a birthday present that you talked to Donald Trump, speaking of Donald Trump and, and Ted Cruz and all the other guys. Uh, your radio show today, you spoke to them. Did they give you any headlines? What are the headlines here? Yeah, I think, I think the headline for Ted Cruz is that he grew up speaking Spanish. I wanted to clear that up. And that uh, he fired Rick Tyler. He thought it was unfortunate, but he needed to. And he's not worried about the narrative. He's, he's actually leaning into the narrative, liar, 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 and taking it on, which is what you have to do. There's an old adage in politics, which is hang a lantern on your, pro on your problem. But there's another old adage. Lee Atwater, the late, great Lee Atwater, said, when your opponent is on the ground with a broken arm, step on it. So Donald Trump and Marco Rubio stepped on it today, and they're going to continue to drive this story as far as they can. I also had Ben Carson on today. He forgiven um, Ted Cruz for the Iowa brouhaha and said so, but Donald Trump joined me after Ben was on. He said, look, he brought up the Ben Carson thing, and he went after Ted Cruz really hard, even though it's kind of counterintuitive to me. He wants to keep Cruz alive and dividing the anti-Trump vote, but he might end up breaching the firewall hey, in Hugh, Texas and taking him out. Let's listen to some of Trump uh, from, your, from your interview. Okay. We've had a lot of problems with him. Uh, he's a person that uh, doesn't like telling the truth, and I just find it hard to believe that some of the things he said. So he plays hardball, but, and I like hardball, and I've met a lot tougher people than him, believe me, many, many, many times tougher, but he has a real hard time with the truth. Hmm. And Ted Cruz, obviously, the, responding the way he did, he's worried, as I said to Sunland, that this may be sticking. Oh, he's very. You know, you've got a, a narrative like this takes hold, and it got a hold of Nixon early in his career, and he had to fight it for the rest of his career. It doesn't mean you can't beat it, but you would rather be talking about the constitutional issues raised by the Scalia vacancy. Donald Trump told me tonight he will reincarnate. He wants a Scalia reincarnation for his nom for the court. Ted Cruz would rather be talking about that than firing his spokesperson and, and giving Marco Rubio an opportunity to go out, as you noted earlier in the broadcast. Rubio had this day where he collected more endorsements and money. Like that, all of the Jeb people seem to have gone to Marco Rubio. A lot of people are leaning on John Kasich to get out. The Ohio governor will not get out until Ohio. I, I've known John Kasich a long time. But I, I do think the big story of the day is that uh, Donald Trump's going to win tomorrow in Nevada. John Ralston and others say that. He's going to win big. Mm -hmm. Your poll confirms that. And then can Ted Cruz keep his firewall in Texas on Super Tuesday? And our debate Thursday night will have a lot to do with that. It's going to be sparky. Oh, is it going to be sparky? So <laughs> you, you mentioned John Kasich. He spoke to Wolf Blitzer today about what you said. Listen to this. Are they privately ur urging you to drop out? No, I, haven't, I heard, haven't heard from any of the special interests to get me to drop out. In fact, we're signing people up. Uh, we're signing up some significant uh, Republican fundraisers, and our political organization is expanding as well. We're going to keep going because, you know, when I travel places, people beg me. They say, you stay in. You represent hope for me and for my family. And I, this is all sort of political mumbo-jumbo from pe people who, you know, I don't even know who they are. And, you know, the fact is uh, we're just going to keep on going. And at some point when we get the consolidation, I'm very hopeful, Wolf, it's going to be towards me. All right. So uh, do you said you think he will stay in uh, to Ohio at, at I least. Do. Um, but do you think there's pressure? You don't think it's time for maybe him to make room for someone else? That's a conventional wisdom. Well, you know, uh, there are people in the party who want him out, but he, he did pick up a couple of hedge fund guys today and made some money. But here's, here's what John Kasich believes. He is who he is. He got there through hard work and by uh, beating odds. He, he, won an, he won in Congress. I think he was the only Republican to win the year that he won. It might, might have been 1982. John Kasich has always been a long and he's tough as nails, and he's happy. He's a happy warrior. So he's not going anywhere, and I, I, I say it every time I come on your show, Don, an open convention is a real possibility unless Donald Trump takes out Ted Cruz in Texas and Marco Rubio in Florida. 
If he does that, I, I think he's pretty much unstoppable. But I, I don't see that happening. I'm a fairly traditional guy. I think home state favorite sons win their, their state, absent extraordinary circumstances. So I, uh, this debate could be very, very big, and there are some issues that are troubling for Donald Trump. I asked him about his tax returns today, and they still haven't been reproduced. And he said they'll get there eventually, but you know the pressure is going to build on him to, to release that and to so, get more specific about his answers. So at this point, no clear runaway. Trump is stoppable to you at this point, and you still believe there oh, yeah, could be I, yeah, an open convention. <clears throat> yes, I don't think there is any no way uh, in, in heck to predict what's going to happen, but the odds makers and the bet takers show Donald Trump with a 50% uh, probability and Marco Rubio with a 40% probability, and they've got Kasich in, in low single digits or high single digits and Ted Cruz a little bit higher than that. That reflects uh, a, a divided field in which the possibilities are endless. Only Ben Carson doesn't have a path, and I asked him about that today, mm -hmm. and he said his path is to hope that they all break to him, and th that's kind of a long ball, but four Four people could be the nominee, and uh, we'll find out more on Thursday night. You want to predict Nevada? You know I have to ask. No, you got me to predict uh, South Carolina. I got it right, thank goodness, but I put the crystal ball away. I got it exactly right, yep. <laughs> All right, you know how we're... On your show. Yeah, you did. You know how we're similar? Because <laughs> a, a week from tomorrow, I'll be celebrating with you. I'll be 27. Oh, really? Yeah, that's a joke. Uh -oh. I'll be a lot older You'll be 27. 27. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> thank you, Hugh. Happy birthday again. Always good to thank see you. Thank you, Don. Thank you.